Now let's look at the execution phase and see how the compilation step and the work that it does leads to the execution phase. So I'd like to think of the compilation step as more like a, like an accounting or bookkeeping step where the compiler kind of uh, makes a record of all the variables that are being used and where they're being used and all that information is ready for the execution step to use. Now the execution step doesn't really look at the wars, okay? It just looks at what it needs to do. There's no declaration that, it, that is uh, applied in the execution step. The execution step executes, it acts. So for instance, in this line, if the compilation step was looking at this part of the code and registering the variables, the execution step is going to look at this part, okay, the other part. So it's not going to worry about the bars and the declarations. It's going to see what it needs to do and it's going to do it. Now, when it needs to find what variables to use, it actually looks at the scope chain that was created during the compilation step. We looked at how different scopes and different variables are registered in those different scopes. Um, now, the execution step is going to look at that in order to identify what variable to use when. All right, so let's run through the execution step now. We're going to play the role of the uh, execution process, and we're going to look at how it handles this piece of code. This is a code that we've seen in the previous video. This is the scope chain for this code. Uh, now let's look at what the execution step does. When an execution step executes something, when it sees a statement like this, what it has to do is obviously take this string value and assign it to this variable. Now which variable of which scope does it assign to? Okay, so in order to do that, it looks at the bookkeeping that the compilation step has already done. Now this statement is being executed in the global scope. So what's going to do? What it's going to do is it's going to look at the global scope in the scope chain, and say, "Hey, global scope, do you have a variable with the name my name?" Okay, so it's going to check the global scope for it. And now we see that there is a my name registered in the global scope. So it's going to get that, and it's going to assign this hard-coded string to it. All right, now there is this function uh, declaration and there's nothing that happens over here. Now this line gets executed. This line calls greet with my name. Now this is a variable and this is a variable. Now again, this is something that it needs to access from the global scope because remember, even in line seven, the execution context is still at the global scope, right? It's not inside a function. So now the interpreter is gonna check the global scope to see if there's a variable called greet and it does find it. So it's gonna use that, that variable, which happens to be this function declaration. Now the next variable that it needs to access is my name. Now, again, since this is still the global scope, it's gonna check the global scope for a variable registered with my name, and sure enough, it finds it. It's registered in the global scope. Now it gets that variable, and it calls the first variable, which is a function, and passes in the second variable, which is the argument, right? It has found those two variables. Now when this function is called, it executes it, right? So now here we have an assignment. We talked about this. There is an implicit assignment here where the name variable is assigned to the value that is passed to it. The value we know is Kaushik. Now, what this does is it again has to do the assignment because it's interpreter, right? It acts. So it has to do the assignment. And now this assignment is inside the scope of the greet function, okay? So it has to take something and assign it to the variable called name. Now it checks, hey, greet scope, do you have a variable called name? And now it finds the variable name inside the scope of create. Now it gets that and it assigns the value Kaushik to it because that's what's passed to this function. And up here it has to execute console.log hello plus name. All right. So now this is actually an object reference. Okay. So there is a global object called console, which is what which is why all of our console.logs and all of our code works. So it's going to check the greet scope and say, hey greet, do you have a variable called console? declared in your scope. Now the greet scope does not have it because you see here, there is nothing declared on the greet scope with the name of console. So what it does is it actually goes one level up. It checks the global scope and that's how the scope hierarchy works. If, uh, if the interpreter does not find something which is in that scope of the function, it goes one level up and checks if it's there. And if it's not there, it goes one level up and it keeps going till it hits the global scope. In our case here, in order to find console, it checks the greet scope. It does not find it. The next scope itself is the global scope. So it checks, hey, global scope, do you have a variable called console? Well, it turns out even though we don't have it registered in our function, in our code, right? So this code has resulted in this scope chain and we don't have that registered, but there is the scope, uh, you know, there is this variable called console in the global scope because that's a part of the JavaScript runtime. So it gets that console object 
because that's available in all JavaScript runtimes, right? So now that console object has a dot log method. So it's going to call this and it's going to pass in this string plus name. Now here you go, another variable reference. Now it has to resolve this variable, right? The interpreter has to resolve this variable. Now again, this is inside the scope of greet. Now it checks the greet scope to see if there's a variable with the name name. And sure enough, it finds it. It was the same variable it accessed before, but it does the check anyway. Every time it makes a check to make sure that it's referring to the right variable. Now it checks the greet scope and it finds the variable called name. Now it gets the value, which happens to be Kaushik. And now it adds these two up, hello Kaushik, and it sends that string to the console.log. And now this function ends and the program execution ends. Okay, so this is what's happening in the interpretation step of this program's execution. So again, think of the execution as a two-phase thing. The first step is the compilation step where the scope chains are created, right? So there is variables being declared and each variable goes and sits into one of these uh, scopes in the scope chain. And then you have the interpretation step where it gets those variables by referring to the scope chain. It interrogates the scope chain for the scope that it's trying to resolve the variable for. And then it uses those variables depending on what's available in the scope chain. And if a variable it needs is not in the scope that it's trying to use, it goes one level up the scope chain and checks again. And it, if it doesn't find it, it can goes one level up and so on till it goes all the way to the global scope. All right. Now, the question is what happens if it does not find it in the global scope? We have kind of looked at this, but let's revisit this with our knowledge of the scope chain in the next video.